history. It's very important to have to learn counseling skills. Uh, kila mmoja katika huduma anahitaji kuelewa hali ya kushauri. Uh, I want to share one experience of me going to a one country to do mission work. And uh, and the pastor asked me to counsel a couple. Na mchungaji akamuuliza ashauri watu wa ndoa ama ndoa. And then when I was counseling the couple I found that there was problem in the relationship. And But the pastor was very anxious to help this couple to really be devoted to the church. Na mchungaji alikuwa anataka kabisa alikuwa na hamu hao watu hii nini jamii ipate kujitoa kwa huduma kanisa. He was very conscious that then he told me, can you talk about the anger issue? Na akamsumzia kwamba wasumzie kuhusu hasira. But at that time I found that I have to let the couple know about the relational problem first. Eh hapo akataka ya kwamba wale walio na kuandoa wapate kujua hali ya hasira kwanza ama hali ya ya ndoa kwanza and and uh, after a while the pastor start i i would say uh, you know keep telling the couple what they should do uh, kila wakati mchungaji angemwambia ya kwamba waambie hao wapendwa ama mume na mke kile wanatakana wafanye uh, he told the couples to you know care for each other be nice to each other and to be nice to the the mother-in-law akawa naulizia anasumzia huyu ndugu na dada wawe na katika hali ya kuelewana vizuri na pia kupenda mama mkwe na in the process i did not want to uh, contradict the pastor at all na hakutaka kuwa kinyume ya masumuzo ya mchungaji because i don't want to cause any problem uh, with the pastor and the couple kwa sababu hakutaka kuleta tena utengano kati ya hao wapendwa ambao ni mume na mke na mchungaji. I I did finish, you know, the counseling with helping the couples to realize their problems. Hakumalizia na ili wale ndugu na dada ama mume na mke wapate kujua shida zao katika nini ndoa hiyo. And how they could, you know, change and work on the relationship. E vile wange badilio wange wange badilisha hali yao ya mahusiano katika ndoa afterwards i talked with the pastor in a humble way baadaye akazungumza na mchungaji kwa njia unyenyekevu because he asked me to do training on counseling kwa sababu alisema afundishe wale kuhusu eh eh, eh kushauri afundishe kanisa na hawa pia i told him the the concept of counseling akamuelezea eh, mbinu za kufanya mashauri I told him that when we teach we can tell if people are ready uh, if for instance you are ready to learn how to pray for people who experience God I can teach ikiwa akamwambia ikiwa watu wako tayari kwa mfano nyinyi mko tayari kwa kufundishwa jinsi ya kuombea watu na mkiwa tayari hivyo ako tayari kufundisha but when people are not ready they are in a certain position ikiwa watu hawako tayari wako katika hali nyingine the couple they did not you know they they thought they were doing the right thing and they were angry with each other na walikuwa na hasira mwingine kwa mwingine ama wanachukiana so at that moment they were not willing and they didn't know how to change na katika hali ile hawakuwa wanajua vile wanaweza kubadilika so i have to guide them to realize the problem and guide them how to change na ilikuwa ni jukumu lake kuwasaidia kuelewa shida yao ili wapate kubadilika. I use this illustration. Anatumia hii na kili. They are here. Wako hapa. I want them to go here. Anataka waende juu. I cannot change them in one session of counseling. Na hawezi kufanya wakabadilika kwa mafundisho 
ya lisali moja ama wakati mmoja. I have to guide them to realize their problems. Anahitaji awaelezee wapate kujua shida zao and then to think about the solutions together na wapate kuwaza kuhusu eh, suluhisho pamoja wakiwa pamoja. Hopefully they will listen and gradually change. Eh, kwa maana ya kwamba wata wataelewa na kwa muda sio muda wapate kubadilika. I use an illustration. Na anatumia hii kupatiana maelezo. If you have a church member who doesn't love the Lord. Ikiwa uko na muamini ambaye hapendi Bwana. He doesn't love the church. Hapendi kanisa. And you just talk to him and say, unamuelezea tu na unamwambia. You love the you, you you should love the, the Lord, you should love the church. Unatakana umpende Bwana na upende kanisa. If you don't love God, God is not happy with you. Ikiwa hampendi Bwana, Bwana hako na uh, hako na amani na wewe. So you should hapendi. serve God with me. Kwa hivyo tumikia Mungu na mimi. Now after you tell them that, do, would they start to obey you? Ikiwa utawaelezea hivyo wataanza kukuti. If you just tell your members, this is your problem. You need to change. You need to do this. After you tell them, will they change? Ikiwa utawaambia hii ndio shida. Hii ndio shida. Wakisikiza watakuwa kubadilika. I will tell you, most people don't want to change when you tell them to change. Nataka kuelezea watu wengi hawataka kubadilika unapoambia wabadilike. Now this pastor learned when two days later his mother called him. Eh uh, huyu mchungaji akakuja akaelewa baada ya siku kadhaa mama akimpigia simu. And the uh, and the mother kept telling him what to do. The mother kept telling him what to do. Na mama mzazi akaendelea nafikiria mama mkuu akaendelea kumwambia kile cha kufanya. And he listened and he felt that the mother was preaching to him. Na huyo mchungaji ikawa ni kama kwamba mama anamhubiria. So he told his mother, akaambia mama, I'm not a child. Mimi si mtoto. You don't need to talk to me like that. Utaka uniongeleshe hivi. And then he suddenly remember what I said. Na akasema sikiza vile nikuelezea. If we preach to members not on the pulpit but when you talk to people and keep saying you have to do this, do this you have to do that if if preach, keep preaching to people like that. Ukianza kuhubiri na unahubiri watu unawaelezea fanya hii fanya hii ukiendelea hivyo. They will think we are like his mother. Watadhania sisi ni kama mama wa, ama wazazi wao. Keep nagging. Kila wakati unaweka kwake kidole unamuonyesha kidole. And they will be turned off by pastors like that. Now what a turn up? They will be turned off that they, they would make them hawatataka tena kuonana na na mchungaji kite. But many pastors did not realize that. Na wachungaji wengi hawaelewi hilo jambo. Many pastors have this habit if they see something wrong with someone they will keep telling the person you have to change you have to do this do that. Tunaji wengi tuna mazoea tukiona shida kwa mtu tunaendelea kumuelezea na kumuelezea kumuelezea badilika badilika. Now I have to tell you what happened I I just say this uh you know to illustrate the point. Anazungumzia ili ili apate kupeana maelezo. You know I care about this pastor anajali kuhusu mchungaji after the pastor learned the lesson he was willing to to listen to people more alipojifundisha hii na kili akawa tayari sasa kusikiza asikize watu sahihi he realized when his mother talked to him like that he doesn't he didn't like it he didn't want to listen eh wakati mama alikuwa akiongea na yeye hakuwa anataka kusikiza he didn't realize when he was when we were talking with the couple when he talked to them tell them what to do Hakuelewa wakati alikuwa anasungumza na hawa mke na mume. Hakuelewa kila alikuwa anawaelezea. I noticed the couple the reaction was like this. Na sasa yani mume na mke hii ndio ilikuwa sasa hali yao ya kujibu. The couple's head were bent down. Hii mume na mke wakati mchungaji anaongea wangeliangalia chini. When the pastor kept talking the head would bend down. Wakati mchungaji anaongea nao wameinama chini. Were they excited to hear what the pastor said? Wana ile msusumko wa kutaka kusikia mchungaji ataongea nini? They were not. Hawakuwa na ile hao. They were just fearing, you know, just walikuwa tu wanavumilia. 
just let the pastor talk, but hopefully the pastor will finish talking soon. Now, the point is this, we want to change people. You want to change your wife? Do you preach to your wife? You have to wash my clothes, you have to do things to that. You have to listen to me. Do you like your husband to talk to you like that? Do this, do that, do this, do that. Do this, do that. Nobody likes that. It's not going to change people. Now the, con the concept of counseling is this. You listen to people and know where they are. Now, I want to tell you, these skills are very helpful in all relationship uh, situations. If you learn to listen to people and respond to their needs and feelings, you can change more people. You have more friends. Now the key is this, when this person talks about his problems, for instance, um, I use an illustration. This person's mother passed away. And she's crying. Very sad. And you tell the woman, tell oh, your, mother, your mother is in heaven. Rejoice because your mother is in heaven. Do not cry. Do not be sad. Do you think it will change her? But if you say, oh, I know you love your mother. I know you feel very sad. I know you miss her. It's not easy. The person will say, wow, you understand me. I saw in many funerals a woman crying. Everyone come to her and say, don't cry, don't cry. Why did you say Let go, let go, no problem. So everyone is advising. Not too many people say, oh, I know you miss her. I know you love her. I know she means a lot to you. Now, if people talk to you like that, how do you feel? You feel good, right? You feel, this person knows my feeling. If a person comes to you and says, Pastor, you're not preaching well. You have to read the Bible more. <laughs> Pray more. You'll be a pastor, better pastor. You see the people leaving you now. If you don't change, the people will go away. Does it help you? But if someone says, Oh, Pastor, I know it's very difficult to be a pastor. I pray for you all the time. I know it's not easy for you. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm willing to do it for you. And I appreciate what you've done for me. Now, if someone talks to you like that, would you like this person? Do you, do you like this person? Yes. So a person can understand your feeling and respond to your feeling. You would like that person. But if he keep preaching to you, this is what you should do to be a good pastor. I know what, you know, I went to a church to serve and after three months, the senior pastor asked me to be the senior pastor. 
anaelewa alienda kwa kanisa baada ya kuhudumu miezi mitatu ule mchungaji mkubwa akasema hapana wewe chukua usukani kwa mchungaji mkubwa he said every time after i preach my wife kept telling me you don't preach well anasema kwamba wakati wote ule mchungaji mwingine i don't like your preaching na wakati alikuwa akihubiri mkaka na mwambie sipendi mahubiri yako and he feels very bad na anasikia vibaya sana when he saw me come he said you be the senior pastor alipomwona anakuja akaa so the wife's word does the wife's word build up the pastor no ayo la mashauri ya ule mama je ilisaidia mchungaji the pastor was suffering ule mchungaji alikuwa anateseka so we have to realize it. realize that telling people what to do may not help tuelewe kwamba kuambia watu kitu cha kufanya itasaidia when people are ready you can tell them wakiwa watu wako tayari utawaambia they want to learn how to do evangelism you tell them it's fine wakitaka kuenda kufanya uinjilisti waambie ni sawa but they when they are not ready wakati hawako tayari And you tell them you have to preach the gospel. Unaweza kuambia ndeni muhubiri injili. They won't change. Hawatabadilika. Then what can you do to change them? Nini unaweza kufanya kuwabadilisha? Listen to them. Wasikilize. Care about them in every way they talk about things. Wajali katika kila hali ambayo wataongea. When your family members tell you, "Oh, my husband is not nice to me, my wife is not nice to me." ikiwa waamini mmoja wao atatokezea awe mke ama mume anasema watu wangu si wazuri mke wangu si mzuri mume wangu si mzuri don't keep preaching and say you should forgive your husband and wife you should love them and you should be nice to them usiende kanisani na uanze kuhubiri upendo wake wapende waume na waume wapende wake kila wakati ukirudia but listen to them and let them talk about their feelings wacha wenyewe wasimuzie hisia zao and and say i know it's difficult for you now useme naelewa ni ngumu kweli and then and then you can ask what do you think are the problems behind these problems unaweza kuuliza maswali nini unafikiria ni shida kinyume ya hii shida now i don't mean that wife or husband is the, is the main problem both persons are problem si sema ya kwamba mke ama mume ndio shida wote wana shida But if, if I just tell them to change they won't change. Nikiwaambia badilike wata badilike. I have to guide them to realize how they communicate how it is destroying the relationship. Inatakana niwaeleze waelewe vile wenyewe wanaharibu ndoa yao. Sometimes I ask them to talk to each other in front of me. Handle a problem in front of me. Eh mara nyingine huwa nawauliza kila mtu asungumuze shida yake mbele yao. For instance the wife may say oh he never listened to me. Mke anaweza sema mama wangu unishia rekere singeta. And then I'll ask the wife. Na nitauliza mke. When you said that to him what do you think he will how do you think he will feel? Eh anauliza mama je unapoongea hivyo yeye ufikiria namna gani? And then the wife may say well he might not feel happy. Na mke atasema and then i say what can you how can you say it better na nauliza je ni njira hii inayanya yonyo na bora mungu le if she doesn't know how to do it i will guide her to do it and i couldn't la bola it's umwe humbo ringa la bola instead of preaching i will guide them eh badala ya kukamba alaba ise mashauri i will ask them what they can do ndi zomara ya mashaba nya no hola and i will ask them if this works or not i will ask them if it works or not and if they say it doesn't work then i'll ask them how can you do it better so instead of preaching i guide them but first of all i will listen to both of them and listen to their feelings lakini jambo la kwanza atawasikiza wote wawili na kuelewa hisia zao i will tell both of them yeah no it's difficult for you atawaelezea wote wawili kweli ni ngumu kwa nyinyi wawili i have counsel husband and wife and then usually the wife comes to me and say i need help my wife my husband is not nice to me mara nyingi wa mama ndio kimbia haraka na kumuelezea nataka msaada mume wangu si mzuri kwangu 
And in the counseling, I will listen to both of them. Na katika hali ya mashauri atasikiza wote wawili. And I say to both of them, I say, yes, it is difficult for you. Na atasimuzia wote wawili, ndiyo ni ngumu kweni. And I say, I know this problem is not easy to handle. Na awelezea kweli hishi da siyo raisi ya kutatua. You know, some husbands said to me afterwards, Uwejua umeonjine urudi kwa muwelezea badai. When you said that, you know, you are the first person that understand my feeling. When he saw that and both sides were, well, usually I don't help, I mean I don't take side. When both persons saw that I listened to their feelings, they both liked my counseling. Anapata mashauri yao wenyewe. Wa, kila mtu anakuja anasema kumbe unanielewa. When I guide them, anapopatia mwelekeo. They will listen to me. Watamsikiza. And they will try to change. Na watajaribu kubadilika. They might not change you know everything. They might not change everything. Hawatabadilika kila kitu. But if they change a little bit, I tell them, you are doing well. Oh, wakibadilika tu hata kitu kidogo tu. You are improving. Na wasifu mnafanya vizuri. You are improving. Mnafanya vizuri. And the next time they improve a little bit, I say, that's better, that's good. So they feel that I care about them and I am guiding them, I'm not preaching to them and I'm appreciating the change. And some of them, they, the marriage problem is, was serious and then after the counseling, they gradually change. And then if I apply this to help someone's spiritual life. Uh, to help someone's spiritual life. Now the person doesn't pray, doesn't obey God. He commits sins. And many people say, repent. God will punish you. Watu wengi usema tubu, Mungu atakuwa dhibi. And then he will just feel very bad. Na atasikia vibaya sana. But if this person come to me and say, you know, pastor, I have been a very weak Christian. I'm not doing well. Or sometimes I ask them first, how are you? And then they say, I'm not doing well. And mara nyingine uliza maswali wa shindaji anasema, si shindi vizuri, hali yangu si nzuri. The first thing I do, I don't teach right away. Kitu cha kwanza haanzi kufundisha. I will first find out why is it difficult for them. Ataanza kuelewa ni kwa nini inakuwa ngumu. For instance they say when I pray I don't feel anything. Atasema wakati napoomba sijihisi chochote. Then I will say yes I know that is difficult. Atawaambia kweli najua hiyo ni ngumu. Yeah I said in the past too I you know there were times that I pray and I did not feel anything. Eh kuna wakati ningepita katika hali kama hiyo ningeomba lakini sisikii chochote. So it is difficult for you. Kwa hivyo ni ngumu kwako. And that makes it hard for you to pray, right? And it makes it hard for you to pray. Na inafanya kuwa ngumu kwa wewe kuomba. And I know that you are trying. Na najua unajaribu. You just have not found a way. Is in it too how you put in cheer? So I appreciate your effort. Na na omba uongeze nguvu. When you try, you will improve. Ukijaribu uta utaongeze. And I can guide you how to experience the presence of God. Na nitakuelekeza jinsi ya kuhisi nguvu za Mungu. And then they try and then you know they try to open the heart. Na wanajaribu kufunga mioyo zao. And then I will tell them. Na nitawaambia. You are doing well. Unafanya vizuri. You are improving. Unafanya vizuri. You really have the motivation to improve. Umekuwa na changamoto ya ku ya, ya, ya kuongeza. And then the next time I ask them they say I have improved. Na mara ya pili sasa nitakapowauliza watasema ah sasa nimebadilika. And I say you are doing great. Na nitawaambia eh hey, unafanya makusas. And also I would try to help them to try to serve God in some ways. And if, uh, when they're ready, when they're ready. And, and then they found that they can do something for God. And they feel very good. And gradually I can raise up their spiritual life.
This is much better than I just preach at them and say, you have to do this, you have to repent, you have to, you know, follow God. That, I tell you, many people with problems came to me all the time. And I listen to the needs without condemning. And I tell them, God cares about you. God wants to bless you. When you hear this voice inside you telling you to repent, is God talking to you? God is not giving up on you. Mungu hawezi kuacha wewe. And you just respond and say God I need help. Na wewe kazi yako ni kuendelea kusimamia Mungu eh Mungu nataka usimamie. God is very happy. Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And then they try to do it and then I say you are working on it great. Na endelea kusema eh unafanya kwa kwa ukuu. Now this way I gradually raise up the spiritual life of many people. Hii itainua maisha ya watu wengi ya kiroho. So I'm introducing this method of responding to the needs and feeling of people and guiding them to, check, to realize the problems and guiding them to find solutions when they are working on it, then I say, you are doing great. To your children too, when they are working, you say, you are doing great. And then they feel happy. And they will have the motivation. And I also tell them, your life is very precious. God has a wonderful plan in your life. I always tell my people, God has a wonderful plan in your life. You can do great things for God. And then to let people know that they, they are special. God cares about them. And then when they work on it, then I say, you're doing great. <laughs> like this afternoon when you pray for each other and then you experience the Holy Spirit. So I said, you have the anointing. You can do it. Boy, is a fun. That way people have more motivation to serve God. Now this concept of counseling is very important in ministry. And people around you will like you. We're not attracting people to like us. But what we are doing is helpful to them and then they like your ministry. Hii tunafanya ni ya muhimu kwao na watapenda udumu.